Good afternoon, and welcome to 100% The Triangle. My name is Nathan Dollar. I'm a demographer and a sociologist and director of Carolina Demography. Normally, I don't stand on a stage like this, but I look at the triangle as kind of a stage. I like to use numbers to tell a story, and here are a few to describe the triangle. The triangle is the most populous and among the fastest growing regions in North Carolina. Last year alone, the triangle grew by 27,512 residents. 21% of all overall, of overall population growth in the state. 18,698 babies were born in the triangle. 15.3% of all births in the state. But even higher is the number of people who were moving here. My family and I moved here in 2014. Like us, last year, 19,806 people relocated to the triangle. 11,630 from somewhere else in the United States, and 8,176 from abroad. Most people worldwide migrate for work, and Raleigh is consistently ranked among the best places in the entire United States for job seekers. We like to say that the Triangle is among the most well-educated regions in the entire United States. 57% of us 25 and older have a bachelor's degree or higher. And the Triangle is home to approximately 42,000 people who have earned a PhD, roughly 2.6% of the overall population. And we are home to three world-class Research One universities and three historically black colleges and universities. Although there's a lot to be proud of, I'm not here to deliver a rosy advertisement for how wonderful things are. The data are very clear that we are still grossly unequal. Across the triangle, about 11% of our neighbors live in poverty, and that figure grows to 17% for black residents, and nearly one out of every four Latino residents in the triangle live in poverty. We are still suffering from the vestiges of Jim Crow and legal residential segregation in the form of redlining, which is transformed into, hi into hypergentrification and displacement. For instance, about half of all households in the Triangle who rent are cost burdened, meaning that they, they pay 30% or more of their income, household income on rent. It's getting harder and harder for folks to live here. One thing that gives me hope is that we have a rich history of people working together for social progress. In fact, it was students at Shaw University that founded the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1960. It played a critical role in the civil rights movement. And that work continues today. I've been privileged to be a part of some of this work throughout my life. I served in El Salvador in the United States Peace Corps and later served as executive director of a nonprofit that provided medical outreach to migrant farm workers and their families. Today, there are approximately 1,750 nonprofit organizations operating right here in the Triangle, providing critical services to those in need. But we still have a lot of work to do. And to do that work, we need good data. And I'm a data person. But while numbers can tell us a lot and they're fun, they don't always connect to people and to the diversity of our lived experiences. So I wanted to see the faces behind some of the numbers that I crunch. So some time ago, I analyzed the most recent census data to create a demographic profile of the triangle. Uh, we, we, we then used that demographic profile to recruit 100 residents. We broke it all down into five categories, sex, age, marital status, race and ethnicity, nativity, whether one was born in the United States or abroad, and county of residence. To give you a sense of what this looks like, I am one of the 49% male I am in the age group 30 to 44, like 22% of us. I'm among the 43% that are married or cohabiting. And I am non-Hispanic white, like 55% of us. Born in the United States, like 86%. And finally, I live in Raleigh in Wake County, like 71% of Triangle residents. Using these five categories, we wanted to bring together 100 people who represent this area and I had the honor and privilege of being participant number one. 
I then invited the next person, and they invited the next person. And we continued that snowball sampling strategy until we had 100 regular people. And actually, that's not true. I've spent the last several days with this crew rehearsing, and they are anything but regular. They are extraordinary people. So let's meet them. Starting with my colleague and friend, whom I nominated, Christina. Her demographic profile is female, Latina, 30 to 44, married, she was born abroad, and she lives in Raleigh in Wake County, like me. I brought this necklace with me. It's from Guatemala. I'm from Guatemala, born in Costa Rica due to the Civil War. I used to be the vice consul and I worked for the governor. And I have this because I need and I want to always remember why I do what I do. And this is my daughter, Isabella. As I'm looking around, you know, I noticed something. There seem to be millions of people flooded around the stage. And when I think of that, I think of the words, the words that come out of every single human being, every single day. And that seems overwhelming, but it's also the reason we exist, to say what we feel. And I think we can say what we feel in art. So I love doing art projects and it makes me feel safe. And this is my sister, Olivia. I like gymnastics and contortion. This is my silicone doll, Rosie. And my mom got her because when I grow up, I want to be a babysitter. Next up is, actually, I mean it actually, she is my friend, Libby. It's true. <laughs> Hi, I identify as queer. I'm an artist. I've been writing poetry since I was seven. I also have ADHD, so I always have a notebook with me to write down all of my random thoughts so I can remember them later. This is my fellow poet, Janae. I brought three flags with me today because I am bisexual, Filipino, and Chamorro. I am also a sports official, writer, and performer. When she's not out saving the world as Superwoman, this is Ada. I'm a UNC employee, a PhD student, and an immigrant. This flag represents part of my identity. I'm also parenting three first-generation American girls, and this is my youngest, Somi. I brought my hoverboard with me today because it represents my adventurous personality. And this is Tara. I brought my insulin pump with me because I'm always tethered to it and it keeps me alive. I'm really good at finding four-leaf clovers. I work as an Oompa Loompa, and this is my husband, Josh. I'm a nerd from New Jersey. I spend way too much time in front of a computer screen. I brought with me my copy of Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, because it reminds me that the universe is a pretty absurd place, and I shouldn't take anything too seriously. And this is fellow documentary film lover, Jamila. My first language is Southern, and similar to this woven fan, I am a human vessel woven by many stories. I want to introduce to you a wonderful memory artist, Stein. I'm a public artist and urban planner. I brought with me a gold painted stone, which symbolizes the importance of place and memory. If if I were a DJ, my name would be DJ Bedtime. This is Beverly. We discovered that we have the same hair type. I get bored very easily, and as a result, I tend to collect hobbies the way most people collect receipts at the bottom of their purse. This is my trumpet. I purchased it at a thrift store in 2009. I never did learn how to play. This is Gareth. I like cats, I like coffee, I work in investments, but I consider myself an anti-capitalist. This is a book that I wrote that maybe 10 people have read. I think 10 people is enough. Uh, this is my dear friend and wife of another dear friend, Mel. I am a preschool teacher and a nanny, and I brought with me the Bernstein's Bee Book because it was my mother's book that she read me every day as a child. Her untimely passing in 2006 is what brought me to North Carolina and where I found my home. This is my emotional support Hoosier, Corey. 
I am a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community. Today I have this tiny little bottle of testosterone because it is a huge part of my life. Um, and something else that's a huge part of my life is my 12 foot skeleton. And this is fashion icon, Sasha. I brought a teddy bear that I knit because I love to make things and I also love fashion and filmmaking. I'm introducing my sister, Natasha. My name is Natasha, I'm a filmmaker and visagist. I hope to be here in America. I'm here as a citizen of Ukraine. My daughter Maya was born in Germany, we lived in Bulgaria, in Romania, in Ukraine, and now in the USA. I represent my mom, Alison. So I'm translating for Natasha. After 10 years of being in our family, this is still how we communicate. My dream is to become a hairdresser and makeup artist. I hope to achieve this here in America. I am here as a refugee from Ukraine. My daughter Maya was born in Germany, lived in Romania, Ukraine, Bulgaria, and now in the USA. Introducing my mother, Allison. I'm a fifth grade public school teacher and I love the fiber art. This is a scarf that I made and I also made Maya's dress. This is my son who loves lizards, Aramis. I am your local goofy gooper. I brought this Lego car because I absolutely love Lego. Goodbye. What? This is my dad, John. I'm a former firefighter, a current history professor, and I've raised ducks for the last four years. This is my fellow Northern transplant, Maria. I am a mixed media and fiber artist. I'm also a teaching artist where I share my love of art journaling in classrooms and in my studio. This is my husband, Jerome, who has left the couch and his recliner. I'm a disabled Navy veteran, retired certified nursing assistant. And as you see, I have my bow with me, which is one of my hobbies along with reading, photography, and listening to music. I'd like to introduce one of my uh, fellow archery enthusiasts, Anthony. How you doing? My name is Anthony. I am a pit master, a chef, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, and an avid San Diego Chargers fan. And this is my knucklehead of a son, Nathan. As y'all heard, I'm the son of a producer, uh, a, a chef, and just a really weird guy. Um, <laughs> I brought these AirPods because they, well, I'm a producer as well, and they allow me to listen to my music and tone everyone else. This is my friend, Celeste. Hi, I'm a grandma, a great grandmother, and a mom. My grandkids know that I love Valentine's Day. This is Leo, who I'm very fond of, and I bring to you Ella, who is a CPA. I'm from Germany and I'm a member of the Triangle Belly Dance community. I'm here wearing a traditional belly dance outfit complete with cover-up. Next up is my friend, Deborah D. Hermit of the Triangle. Hello, everyone. Tuesdays are Chardonnay with the girls. Um, Sundays are poker with the boys. I brought a picture of one of my pet goats from Somalia, Victor Billy. It always reminds me that in the worst of places, there's joy. And I'd like to pass it off to my fellow New Yorker, Michelle. I'm a proud mom of three and all about art. I like to see life through my own lens. And I believe in opposites attract, because here's my husband, Patrick. I'm a lucky guy. I brought with me a video of the introduction of the world's fastest microprocessor. I brought it because as a young engineer, I helped write the software to demonstrate it. But I kept this not as a trophy, but as a reminder to give every young engineer a chance. And now I mentor and teach students at NC, engineering students at NC State, and I'd like to introduce to you a colleague, Ray. I lead the Data Science Academy at NC State. My family loves North Carolina pottery. And if you go to the State Fair, you might find me and my colleague, Kayleen. I got this t-shirt as a thank you for helping out with a study abroad for engineering students to Rwanda. But the joke is on them because I totally would have done it for free. <laughs> 
So this is actually one of my students, Arun Dithi. Today, I bought a cherry blossom with me, which I got it from Washington, D.C. Fun fact about this is, one week later, I spotted a sticker on it saying it was made in India. Hey, I got an yellow unicorn with me. I got it from my, from my, um, my home country. This reminds me of a time where I used to babysit four of my nieces together. And this is a great dancer, Branton. I graduated from William Peace University with a major in communication and a minor in theater. And I brought three special guests with me today. We have Rico, A Boogie, and Money Making Mitch. And I would like to introduce my personal trainer, William Joseph Odom. My hat is very hot today and I really hat. He likes hats and he wears a lot of hats. I would like to introduce my personal banker, Joel. I have one big goal in life, and that's to be in the film industry, whether that's acting, script directing, or directing in general. And in my free time, I like to chill, be quiet, play games, and just listen to music. While now, I would like to introduce the loudspeaker himself and my little brother, Nati. Good morning. I brought my hair with me because I never, ever, ever cut it. And this is my employee, Mr. David. Hi, I spent my career, professional career working in Afghanistan since the time I was a Peace Corps volunteer in 1968. We had a 40th, 50th anniversary reunion in San Antonio, and this is the shirt. This is the article I bring to you so you can see it. After that, I got advanced degrees, worked for the military at Fort Liberty, now at Fort Bragg, Fort Liberty, for the rest of my career until I retired in 1912. I, in 2012, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my husband. And I have, we've had, we have six, uh, I have three children, six, six grandchildren, and this is the love of my life, Michael. Thank you. And David's the love of my life. My first language was Yiddish. Yiddish was the primary means of communication among Eastern European Jews, most of whom, of course, was, were murdered during the Holocaust. I love Yiddish. This is the Yiddish alphabet, and I keep it next to my heart. I have the pleasure of introducing Jess, who is a UNC freshman. I am an artist, and I really love cats. And I brought with me my lighter, because I really like lighting matches. And this is my dealer, Jamie. I'm an immigrant. I work and like to help people. I own a little place in town called Epilogue. Thank you. This is my grandpa's hammer. This is my other grandpa's cross. This is a big part of who I am. I wanted to show you. And now, my son's unofficial auntie, Lupe. I'm a proud Mexicana, I'm a first-generation college student, and I'm a Tar Heel. Today I brought my lucky watch. I've worn it for interviews, presentations, and both graduations. I'm now a girl boss working to make healthcare better for all. Next, ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce. I'm Sarah, and I work for the City of Raleigh's Arts Office, and I love animals, so I brought... Karsten. Karsten's not my dog but he's somebody's dog. Because of the work of Shannon Johnston, a local photographer, whose portraits of shelter dogs got a hundred of them adopted. And this is the only man I know who can fly, Adam. 
That's a fact. Um, I am a local illustrator and I am also a guitarist based in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, and I brought my amethyst crystal, which is matching with my beautiful girlfriend of four years visiting from Georgia. <laughs> Uh, and up next is my arch nemesis of eight years, Emma. I'm a musician born and raised in Durham. The first song I ever performed live was called Red Pants. So today I'm wearing red pants. Here's my neighbor from approximately 28 miles away, McKinley. I was born in Savannah, Georgia, and I moved to North Carolina when I was six. And I brought my cheer hoodie and my cheer medal. Next up is my very annoying brother, Kyron. I, li I like to do soccer and basketball and football and while I'm in those things, I like to do cool stuff like dancing. And this is my friend, Alan. I'm a farmer, a hiker, and a grandfather. So I brought my hat, my hiking stick, and most importantly, my granddaughter, Willa. I brought my dragon wand because it represents that my dad is a blacksmith and that I love dragons. And this is my neighbor, not next door, but my neighbor, Bob. You are listening to WHUP's Pass the Hat, the best in live music radio broadcasting to you live from... Wait, wait, sorry, that's me in front of a mic on Friday nights. This is Saturday night. I'm a reformed CPA. I make these cool cigar box guitars. And to my right a bass player who's looking for a band. So if you have one, let him know. My pal, Ben. I'm an artist and an originator. These drums represent the heartbeat of creativity that's in everything I do. I'm also a family man, and I'd like to introduce my amazing wife, Sarah. I'm a wife, a mother, and a daughter. I brought this pen because it represents my profession and my passion, which is researching and writing how charitable giving can make a difference in the world. And this is my son, Elliot. I'm a Jedi and a musician in training. So I brought my guitar that my dad gave me, and this is my Padawan, Ira. I brought my skateboard today because the skating community is a very important part of the triangle for me, and this is my financial advisor, Nola. I have something to admit to you all this afternoon. I am a bone collector. I love finding bones in the woods and especially the desert. Um, this is a skull I found in Duke Forest, which is one of my favorite places to go walking in Durham. And this is Mindy, who works at the Nasher. Growing up, my dad always kept Diet Coke in the fridge that was for him and no one else. So fast forward a few decades, my siblings and I all have a Diet Coke addiction. This is my daughter, Nina. This is my stuffed animal, Jaffy. I had him since before I was born. This is my sister and co-conspirator, Avery. I brought with me a perfume because I love it when people compliment me on how good I smell. This is Janie. I I am a Barbie girl. Um, I I love swimming. I love cheerleading. I love gymnastics, and this is ballet. I brought Frog and Toad by Arnold Lobel. I'm more of a frog. I like to spend time in the woods and make art and music. And I work with three and four year olds at a nursery. And this is Logan. I brought my beaded medallion that was gifted to me by uh, members of my native community as a graduation gift for receiving my master's in politics from New York University. It's got dogwood flowers and is of course Carolina blue, so I always have a piece of home with me. Now as a Carolina alum and a UNC admissions officer, I'm excited to introduce the next generation of Tar Heels with Sophia. When I'm not studying public health with the chimes of the Chapel Hill bell tower in the back, Go Heels. I like making my own music with a violin that has been passed down for 200 years. And this is my lawyer, Anna. I brought my crayons because I love to draw and my favorite color is pink and purple. This is my friend Michelle. I am a former software sales account executive that is currently on sabbatical. I brought with me my water bottle. I take it with me everywhere because I like to stay hydrated. 
And this is my tennis tournament travel buddy, Yolanda. In the words of the great American poet George Benson, give me the night. I love the night. I love to go out and dance so much that my DJ friends gave me a party called Yo's Jams, where every song is my request. So I brought with me my list of Yo's Jams. And here is my companion in the love of milk chocolate and almonds and our preference of cookies over candy. It's Sarah. Tonight, I brought my journal. I like to write my thoughts and feelings in it. And this is Ben, who's learning Spanish. Tonight, I've brought my chessboard because I'm a fan of puzzles and uh, logic games of any sort, crosswords, the like. And esta es mi amiga Joana de Creedmoor, North Carolina. Soy del Salvador, vine hace un año. Este es mi objeto más valioso, fue el primer regalo de mi niña. Y presento a mi prima Angelica. I brought my gummies because I love eating so much. And here's my sister, Mirari. I brought this because it's purple and my favorite color is purple. And this is my friend, Mary. This is my daughter, Christina, and she is the joy of my life. I came to the Triangle 30 years ago as a transfer by IBM. At that time, I considered myself a woman of techno in technology. At, at, and uh, since then, I have uh, been able to grow my skills with the IBM at the time and, and learn the new PC business. And many people don't know that in, in the 1990s, IBM built PCs here in the Triangle. Here's my fellow technologist, Chris. I've been a thinker and I've lived a lot of lives. In each of them, competence and kindness guide me to find living intergenerational libraries. I brought this piece of vintage glass because it was a portal, a window into another life. It's owned by my friend, who I'm so glad I was able to brought to bring with you tonight, Chuck. Hi, I brought with me this uh, fancy photograph of Sarah Ferguson Fergie, Duchess of York. She gave it to me in 1996 when I edited her memoir. I'm a professor at Meredith College in the art department, and my favorite class to teach is weaving, which is why I brought this antique shuttle with me. And I'd like to introduce my son, Finn. I'm a musician, and these are my headphones because music is very important to me. And next up is another musician, Ethan. Hi, I'm a music producer, and this is my MIDI keyboard that I use to make my beats. When I'm not keeping my neighbors up in the dead of night, I do also like to be working on my car. And this is my friend Hector. I'm a statistician, relatively new to the triangle, and uh, I brought earplugs because I love going to concerts and have been worried about losing hearing lately. Uh, I'd like to introduce my friend Jeff. I brought this red maple tree branch to symbolize my passion, which is trees. I am a tree biologist, and I'm excited to see these red maples turn red very soon. And this is my friend Bob. This is a gavel. In 1986, I moved from the mountains of Western North Carolina to the Triangle to become a judge, expecting to only be here at the most a few months. I'm still here 37 years later. And Gladys is a newcomer to the Triangle, and she already loves North Carolina. Here's Gladys. I had a fire in 2011, and I brought this bracelet because it's the the fire. And here is my brother, Edward. Hi, and I brought my tablet because it's a wonderful gateway to games, creativity, and knowledge. And it's also like having a playground and a library in your backpack. And here's my niece, Ivy. This is my volleyball and I got it when I was in fifth grade and I also started playing volleyball in fifth grade. And this is my friend Iris. I'm from Brazil and I moved to the US one month ago. I am a musician and this is my violin. Now we get to know Erin. I'm an environmental educator and scientist turned stay-at-home mom with a small online shop of vintage goods. And this is Walt, and he loves dump trucks. And this is Calvin. He also loves trucks. 
because brothers. And this is my friend, Tim. I am an amateur beekeeper, among other things. Um, excited to be here tonight. I have bees and chickens in the backyard and decided this was the least messy option. This handsome gentleman is John. Okay. Uh, I'm carrying this cane. Uh, it's, it's functional. It's not decorative. But it is decorative. It was designed by a, uh, a granddaughter, uh, Grace. And the colors of blue and yellow represent Ukraine. The flower is the sunflower the state flower of Ukraine. It call, calls to mind a song I think we've all heard. It was sung first time over 60 years ago during my era of Vietnam. Uh, and, it, and it brings to mind the people of Ukraine and in the past week, the people from Israel in the Gaza Strip. And so with that, if you want to join me, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Let us walk with each other in harmony. And here we introduce Dharma, a sophomore at UNC from Atlanta. I'm a first-generation American, and I'm a singer and songwriter. Um, and this is my friend Juan. This giant record is from 1954. It has Thanksgiving music on one side and Christmas music on the other. It was made by the U.S. Army Recruiting Service for the troops in Korea. It also represents my eclectic interest in music of all forms. And here is the self-proclaimed Denzel Washington, my boy Sam. So during the casting process uh, for, for this event, it was uh, discovered that a number of people who work in the service industry, firefighters, people who work in security, et cetera, were not able to join us here on stage. So I, an actor, will portray one of them. And here, uh, a distinguished graduate of Western Carolina University, number 18, Darius. These are my fraternal bees. I am a member of the one and only Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. My uh, brotherhood, they are all about brotherhood, scholarship, and service. Now I'm gonna introduce you to my partner in crime, Monique. Wherever I go, I carry my family in my heart. But today I bring a notebook, which has the last physical picture I have of my brother who passed away. And here's my partner, Indigo. Their actual partner. Um, <laughs> I'm a recent UNC graduate, and in my spare time, I like to play with my pets. And this is some guy I found on the street called Tent. Trent. I'm a smelly young man. In reality, I'm an environmental engineer, and I design drinking water treatment plants. This water bottle's full of water, that comes from the Orange Water and Sewer Authority, which is our regional water district that serves Chapel Hill and Carborough. And this is my father figure over here, Brandon. I'm also a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And these days I spend my time as a stay-at-home father. And in my spare time, I like to swim. And in case you couldn't tell, I don't have a lot of spare time. And with me, 100% the triangle is complete. We are the triangle. We represent the triangle. We are a statistical cross-section of the population. We are 100 of the 1,626,052 people who make up the triangle. We can perform the triangle 
because 51% report as female and 49% report as male. I think, I think life today for women is so different than it was in the 1960s. I moved here with IBM, as I mentioned, in the absolutely male-dominated world. Women had to work harder to even be considered colleagues. Prior to coming to the Triangle, I was part of the early women's movement. I never did burn my bra, but I was still passionate about the opportunities for my peers and me. And fortunately, there are, are roots of, of strong women in my family. My mother was born in 1909 and, and was an orphan, yet she still had her very own car in 1936. Women's progress is maybe one of the best things that's happening to, in this country. I'm really proud of how, we've, how far we've come. Uh, who, who thinks of my peers here, by, please raise your hand, who, who thinks that women and men are treated equally in North Carolina? You can raise your hand. I am the executive director of the LGBT Center of Raleigh. I am non-binary and transgender, but assigned female at birth. But the census only gives us two options, male or female. Hands up who feel restricted by this binary. Я из Украины давно планировала приехать в США. Но, к сожалению, не получалось. I am from the Ukraine and was planning to come to the US a long time ago, but unfortunately, it didn't work out. Но когда началась э, ужасная война, я наконец-то приехала в США. But when the terrible war started, I finally was able to go to the United States. Поэтому я думаю, что жизнь похожа на игру в рулетку. So I think life is like a game of roulette. We can perform the triangle because we can embody the age chart. And speaking of age, I'm standing here because they, at 80, they tell me I'm the oldest person on the stage. Well, yay for me. <laughs> I, I worked in publishing a great part of my life and edited around 100 best-selling books, love stories, thrillers, memoirs. If I were to write something about my life, it would begin in a rural community with a population of around 300, no town, just a stretch of paved road. In my earliest years, <coughs> my family lived in three rooms attached to the country store my father ran. No indoor toilet, no running water, and a wood-burning stove. In grade school, I had a teacher who pushed me very, very hard. I thought she did it because she didn't like me. But on the last day of her class, she told me it was because she believed in me and that she believed I could accomplish things. Well, I went ahead, I applied to Duke, I got accepted, and I found out, I even went to law school, and I found out after graduating, the fact that I'd been admitted to Duke because I was uh, this uh, kid from a poor community, uh, and I, uh, they were studying me and watching me and judging whether I could make it or not. Well, shades of Big Brother. Uh, because I had gone to law school, I, and because I love New York, I decided to try to be a New York lawyer. But I realized I just didn't have the passion it would take to be a good lawyer. I knew I had to find something else. That else I stumbled into was a tiny job at a big publishing company. I rose through the ranks and ended up working as editor for books by many interesting people, many literary figures, and two presidents, Nixon and Reagan, neither of whom I voted for. <laughs> when in 
2004, the big New York wave broke. I found myself in a new home, or need of a new home. And coincidentally, I was offered a job as an editor here in North Carolina. I worked here until three years ago, when I finally retired. But by then, after 20-some years in the community, I knew I had really come home. I started as a country hick, a racist, with not one iota of understanding about what my life would turn into, and though there are a lot of negatives to reaching 80. There are also so many positives, like the people I've known, the places I've seen, the things I've learned, and as long as I am able, I plan to keep on learning, like the things I'm learning today from these remarkable people around me. Now I will take one step for each decade I have lived. Now, everybody, ready, set, go. We are the triangle because we live in three different counties. If I were to describe Durham with three words, it would be unique, hopeful, and unrealized. Why unrealized? In my memories, it was a devoted, progressive, small town with undeniable energy, had multifaceted global capacity, yet was a truly Southern town. However, Durham drastically changed into an overwhelming place. It's something to be said when you witness your home become consumed by daily blood-curdling emergency siren screens and view the flocking of the cranes in the sky that birth monstrous monstrosities that block both the sun and community connection. It is my hope that Durham will eventually embrace its true unique nature and identity rather than allow gentrification to politely erase its own authentic cultural identity. We are Durham County. I'm from Orange County. If a Martian landed and asked me what is life like in the triangle, I would tell them that if you have money or a moneyed support system, it's probably one of the easiest and most comfortable places to live on Earth. That said, the less you have, the more invisible you become to all the things that people describe as important parts of the triangle. We are from Orange County. I am a transplant from Indiana. It's rare to meet someone in Wake County who's from here. When I first came here, I was overwhelmed by the vastness of the triangle. The longer I've lived here, the smaller it felt and the more like a community and a home. There's not a lot that would move me from here now. It's my sanctuary. We stand for Wake County. I have something to admit to the audience. I'm afraid of creepy creatures and going out alone. Hands up, who is afraid to go to certain neighborhoods in the Triangle? Yeah. I belong to the Halawasaponi and the Kohari people. If I had a time machine, I would go back to pre-European contact so that I could get to hear my people, my tribes, speak. According to the census data, 86 of us on stage are born in the U.S. Hands up, please. And I was born outside the U.S. Who else? Hands up, please. I recently found out that people are confused about my race. I'll take that as a compliment for sure. 
my hair is a very unique for an Asian since I have curly hairs. They are curious if I'm like half Indian or half something else. We stand for the triangle because we are different races. Hands up who thinks that we all have the same opportunities no matter the races are. We are not actors. We are a body with 100 heads. We are a chorus that cannot speak and sing. We are a choir who cannot sing as one. Currently, I study more than I live. I'm studying English and American studies at UNC. I choose to read a lot of poetry. I think a lot about beauty, academia, and identity. On a standard day, my first class is at nine, but first in the morning, Wilbur, my dog, needs to go outside and my four cats need food. My first class might be about black radicalism, the second about Shakespeare and British literature. I also read a lot about American studies and the history of the US. I would like to be able to work with poetry for the rest of my life. So I imagine then I will teach myself and write my poems. On a normal day, at 2 p.m., you could find me on Franklin Street at Epilogue, having a break. I buy a coffee, look at the books, and pretend I haven't seen them before. What are you doing at 2 p.m.? Playing my game. The Triangle at 3 p.m. The Triangle at 4 p.m. The Triangle at 5 p.m. The Triangle at 6 p.m. The Triangle at 7 p.m. The Triangle at 8 in the evening. The Triangle at, the triangle at 9 p.m. The triangle at 10 p.m. That's not late. The triangle at 10 p.m. The triangle at midnight. Please insert your parking ticket. The triangle at 1 p.m. a.m. The triangle at 2 a.m. The triangle at 3 a.m. The triangle at 4 a.m. The triangle at 5 a.m.
the triangle at 6 a.m. The triangle at 7 a.m. The triangle at 8 a.m. The triangle at 9 a.m. The triangle at 10 a.m. The triangle at 11 a.m. The triangle at noon. The triangle at 1 p.m. Thank you for shopping for See you soon. The average man weighs 191 pounds. And the average woman weighs 166.2 pounds. That means, on stage, right now, there are 17,835 pounds. That's about the same weight as 35,670 copperhead snakes. But if we jump, when we come back down, we will be about as heavy as 45 Durham Bulls. Ready? Wait for it. Jump! How loud can you scream? Ready? Set? Set? Please scream now. <laughs> Who was born and bred in the triangle? I was. That's why I will go over here. Who still lives in a house where they grew up? I traveled all over the world and moved here only a few weeks ago. Who moved to the Triangle this year? I fear that the triangle will get unaffordable. Who fears they will never be able to afford to own a home? Who, like me, belongs to an HOA? I grew up low income. Me and my brother were raised in a single wide trailer. Thanks to the hard work and dedication of my father, once our family grew, we were able to afford a house and land. Who here has ever been homeless or unhoused? At home, I mainly speak Spanish. My parents get upset with me when we speak English. I wonder who of you speaks more than two languages? Thank you.
Who speaks more than three languages? Who speaks more than four languages? Bienvenidos. Sometimes I speak Spanish in my homes. Sometimes it's Creole Ayesian. Ma crazy tiboudou. Sometimes it's French. J'étudie le français dans une université du Caire du Nord pour trois ans. I can understand Korean and also sometimes Arabic. Philistine hurra. knows too much about us. Who thinks corporations know too much about them? The worst part of middle school is I went to the classroom and someone tripped me and I fell. The worst part of high school was when I couldn't hold my pee. When I went to the classroom, when I went to the classroom, when I went to the classroom, I went to the bathroom and the bathroom was locked. But I graduated and I'm done. I can. I can do what I want to do. I can be what I want to be. I can see what I want to be. Have you ever... Have you ever experienced bullying? Who lost somebody within the last month? Who believes in life after death? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Every morning I read the Bible, and my wife and I do a devotional every night. My faith is a vital part of my life and has been since 1971. Who regularly attends a place of worship? Who of you believes there is a higher power? Growing up in a Christian bubble, I wasn't allowed to do, to listen, to say, or to see a lot of things that one would consider major parts of culture. As an adult, 
I've had to catch up on a lot of pop culture. Who believes that there's life in outer space? Who believes that we should privatize the space program? Those of you who want to get on Elon Musk's uh, space shuttle, make an X. One finger up if you want to go with Jeff Bezos. Who feels capitalism works for them? ¿Quién de ustedes piensa que el sueño americano será realidad para ustedes? Who of you think that the American dream will come true for you? I think we should improve managing growth. There are a gazillion new apartments being built and the development game is set up to drive the triangle bigger and bigger and bigger. At some point we have to ask, aren't we big enough? So who thinks there should be a limit to growth? Me. I'm a lawyer and I feel most, really all of my time up these days thinking through how to educate more people on how AI can help bridge gaps in financial services, equity, and inclusion. But with all of these headlines going around these days, who up here thinks that their job might soon be replaced by AI? Most of my work is funded by public dollars, which in turn come from our elected officials. Who of you has the right to vote? And who voted in the last presidential election? Okay, non-voters, look what voters will do with your future. Who thinks we should tighten the border with Mexico? Who thinks marijuana should be legalized? Who thinks that only heterosexual people should be allowed to raise children? Who 
Who has a gun at home? Hold up, one second. We should have everybody out here, so y'all non-voters come back on up. So again, who has a gun at home? Who has had a gun pointed at them? In my past, I worked for the United Nations for 20 years. I lived in lots of different places and did lots of different things internationally. I was a press officer in Somalia. I was there for Black Hawk Down. I was also a logistics officer in Rwanda three days after the ceasefire. Who came to the Triangle to escape violence somewhere else? I was an engineer for a defense contractor. We literally made missiles. So I wonder, who of you thinks that there should be more money spent on the military? Who of you thinks we should support Ukraine with more money? Who trusts their bank? Who has lied on their tax return? Really? Seriously, y'all? Come on. I don't know about y'all, but I don't reckon I trust the results of this last poll. So far, we've been voting in full sight of the audience. What we need is a secret ballot, a dark ballot, if you will. Uh, please switch the lights off. Everybody, please go to your position. Okay, please switch off your flashlights. And I will ask you again, who has lied on their tax return? Uh-huh. Who drinks and drives? Who has benefited from undocumented labor? Who of you does not believe in vaccination? Who or who has a family member who voted for Trump?
Who thinks things are getting too woke? Who has been a victim of domestic violence? Who has ever been in Alcoholics or Narcotics Anonymous? Who is in favor of reasonably unrestricted access to abortion? Who has had or whose partner has had an abortion? Who has cheated on a partner? Who has lied on their dating profile? <laughs> Who has ghosted somebody? Who has a crush on one of the other 99 here? Who dislikes one of the other 99? And who is fed up with all of these questions and just wants to have some fun?
Given North Carolina is a purple state, there are a lot of people living next to each other that have different political views. I think that is one of the most interesting aspects of the triangle. Here, both political groups have worked hard to build the region up in ways that they prefer. However, we realize that here on this stage, we are rather more blue than red. Why is that? Many of our conservative neighbors consider this campus and the arts liberal spaces and were therefore concerned that they would be judged. Though this political demographic is underrepresented, we are grateful to those on stage who are here to offer a more complete ideological representation of the triangle. In the spirit of open-mindedness, we're gonna have an open mic session now. So far, all the questions have been part of a script. Now, we are invited to make any statements we want. The only rule is no repetition. So I'm going to do the first one. I think it's a goddamn shame that by every measure, North Carolina has one of the weakest democracies in the world. I believe that the earth is a globe. Sorry, flat earthers. I am very sad that today is the last show. I wish we could do it again. This is for my niece. I don't think pineapple belongs on pizza. <laughs> I have had friends in front of me get shot in the head. It's impossible to be a country of civilians when there's compulsory military service for at least four years for all citizens. I would rather stay inside all day than talk to anyone. I am uh, a nerd and have my library card number memorized. <laughs> I have given birth at home. I'm no longer sure if it's ethical to have children. I 
I always feel like an outsider. I have been a victim of sexual abuse. I am younger than 16. And I want the grown ups to leave the stage now. Anyway, I play video games an hour or more or daily. to stay at home alone. I like to cook my own food. I have a pet. an instrument. I think the triangle's a dumb name. I'm afraid that there will be more gun violence. I don't want to live like my parents. can do push-ups. Ready? Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
is the Charleston Dances to hip hop. Missy be putting it down. I'm the hottest round. I told your mother, y'all can't stop me now. Listen to me now. I'm lasting 20 rounds. And if you want me, then come on, get me now. Who can perform a dramatic death scene? Can endure a whole minute of freeze on stage. Ready, set, go. is always in the front for family portraits. Who is always in the middle? Who is always at the back? Who says y'all? Who hears leaf blowers all day long? Who enjoys cheering at sports events? Pickleball is a 
sport. <laughs> Who can drink their water at home straight out of the sink? Who checks the air quality before going outside? Who wants Confederate monuments to be taken down? <laughs> Who thinks it is reasonable to ban certain books? Who believes they are racist among the 100 people on this stage? Who is, afraid, who is afraid of being one of them? Who thinks police practice racial profiling? Who wants to appear politically correct? Who has lied? on the stage tonight. Don't, don't lie now. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Who's afraid of the audience? They won't bite. They won't. Who knows somebody in the audience? Wait to them, say hi. Say hi, mom. Say hi, dad. Who wants the lights up on the audience? Now it's up to you, the audience. Who feels represented by us? Raise your hands, please. That's, That's about 95%. <laughs> Who uses data or statistics? That's about 75%. Who has used statistics in questionable ways? Mm-hmm, 10%. Who thinks we are afraid to say what we really think when we're on stage? Mm, that's a lot, that's about uh, 80%. Who thinks it's boring to be politically correct on stage? Oh, about 5%. Who is in favor of sharing the road on the triangle, in the triangle? Sharing the road on I-40, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 okay, 75%. Who of you make six figures? What's that? <laughs> That's about 3%. Who knows somebody on stage? <laughs> That's about 95%. Who's in this theater for the first time? Wow, that's like 80%. Very cool, welcome. Who wants to take a selfie with us? Awesome, okay, get your, get your phones out. Get them out, okay. You know how to do it, turn around, turn around. Turn on your phones, I'll see them when you turn them on. I see a few, okay, get them ready. Okay, we're gonna pose one, two, three. Awesome. Okay, who has a question for us from the audience? Raise your hand. Yes, right here, yep, yeah. Who is afraid of the ocean? Not me, I love the ocean. Uh, another question. Yes. Can you say that again? The question is, who on stage believes that defunding the police and putting the money back into the community is a good idea? <laughs> okay. 
Another question? Yes. Who has struggled with mental health, addiction, or trauma? Any kids? Any kids? Any other questions? I'm a kid. Yes, back in the red. Uh huh. Who plans to vote in the next municipal election? Yay! Yes. Yes, you little guy right here. No? Okay, okay. Okay, who's going trick or treating on Halloween? Any kids got questions? <laughs> yes. You. Who has ever left the country? Who's ever been out of the United States? That's going to Arizona count. No. <laughs> Okay, one more question. Uh, yes, with the blonde, yes. <laughs> Who thinks college is kind of a scam? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We are 100 different people with 100 different perspectives on the triangle. I have a superpower. It is empathy. And my question to you is, what superpower would you like to have? Do you express your political outrage? How would you prefer to commute mainly in the triangle?
much does inflation affect your life? How much did COVID-19 change your life? Have you thought about leaving the triangle? What is your least favorite thing about the triangle? will suffer from climate change. What do you think about the number of immigrants coming into the United States? altered state of mind. Tell me, how do you plan on spending election night 2024?
Thank you.